Welcome to Hashtag Wednesdays Weekly, a weekly information session in collaboration with the voluntary sector and public sector partners. Today's session is Toxic Debt, Experiences and Its Causes, and our hosts are Leon and John. Over to you guys. Okay. Um, so, yeah, um, welcome, everyone. Um, yeah, deeply appreciate you um, showing up um, to this session. So, um, what we're going to do is going to put you in um, breakout rooms. And we just want to ask you, why does this issue of uh, toxic debt or problem debt matter to you? It's quite busy. Yep, you want to set the rooms up now? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Thank you. No problem. So this is just an opportunity for you to just share why this matters to you. That might be in your professional life, it might be in your personal life, it might be uh, how you feel about your community, but just why you're here, what, what, why this issue is relevant to you. And uh, we'll just spend about five minutes doing that. Just, it's a bit of an icebreaker as well. And then we'll um, just ask you to, to obviously feedback to the wider group as well. Uh, you should all have your rooms coming up now. Um, just click to go into them, that'd be great. See if I can find. Sorry, I'm having some difficulty getting to the. Getting there. <clears throat> okay, I want to just uh, start by introducing uh, somebody in my group said they don't know who Running Mead are. Running Mead Trust is a long established anti racist organization in the UK, established in 1968. And we've been working on toxic debt for two reasons. One is that it disproportionately impacts uh, migrant groups and racialized communities. There are other groups that are also disproportionately impacted, women, people with disabilities, uh, single parent households and so on. But it, it does disproportionately impact on um, racialized groups. Um, and the second reason is it is an issue that is so serious and so pervasive that it can create the opportunity for people within communities to reach out across artificial divisions and start working together to find solutions. And one of the challenges we see at the moment in the country is that we're a very divided country at times. And we really need to look for those opportunities to bring people together and say, Let, let's sort this problem out rather than sitting around blaming each other uh, for it. So in this, presentation we're going to look at what is meant by the term problem or toxic debt how has COVID-19 impacted on the issue who's been impacted and what what effects has has this had on these groups um, so what do we mean by the term toxic debt somebody asked earlier um, well it, it's uh, been defined by the government's wealth and assets survey are spending a high proportion, more than 25% of your monthly disposable income on debt. It's about falling behind with bills or credit commitments for two or more months. And it's having household, household debt that is a high proportion of annual disposable net income. And the feeling that debt is a heavy burden. And I think it's true that some people can have a mortgage for a vast amount of money and not even think they're in debt, even though they owe that money, because uh, that doesn't feel out of control. The toxic debt is when people feel they just can't service the debt they've got and, and find themselves perhaps getting into even higher levels of debt. So what, what are the impacts of COVID-19? Now, Strangely, some people have found themselves a lot better off uh, as a result of uh, financially, as a result 
uh, of COVID. Um, apparently households have increased their, their nominal savings by around 100, 125 billion pounds. This is largely where people have had the opportunity to work from home. They've not had to pay their um, commuter fares to work. Uh, they've been able to make their lunch in their kitchen rather than having to go to a cafe or, or whatever. And so people have found they've, they've saved money and they've also not been able to go out in the evening and one thing and another. So some people have found themselves actually in a better financial position as a result of this. Um, however, this is in sharp contrast to those worst off households who have lost income and had to use savings to incur new debt. I'm just gonna hand over to my colleague, uh, Leon, to take us through the next few slides. Okay, so what are the impacts of COVID-19 on wealth and debt? So um, many families have fallen into debt for the first time or increased debts that, have, that they've already had. So 14 million people experienced a negative effect on their income. Um, so the Child Property Action Group estimated that 80% of low-income families had experienced a significant deterioration in their living standards caused by a combination of drop in income and rising costs. And the Joseph Roundtree Foundation, for example, reports that 3.8 million low-income households across the UK are in arrears and 4.4 million had to take on new or increased borrowing. Um, and in many cases, these were households who had to pay that had managed to pay on time before. So obviously kind of that loss of work and uh, loss of income because of um, lockdowns and um, potentially being ill during the pandemic has exacerbated um, some of those trends. Um, who has been affected by these issues? So at the end of September, 2021, so obviously during the height of the, the pandemic, 68% um, of low income universal credit um, recipients were struggling with a risk. So obviously that could be you know, housing costs. Um, you know, if they've taken out a loan and they're behind on their, their payments. Um, so the key groups um, who have a higher rate of poverty include um, households with children, um, people and families not containing full time workers. Uh, people in lone parent families, um, people in families containing a disabled person, and people in families free, with three or more children, and people in rented accommodation, and people in households headed by someone with a non white ethnicity. So, this could be particularly those of Pakistani, Bangladeshi, or a black ethnicity, and that could be due to the um, type of work they're normally um, situated in. So they were often industries which were shut down during the height of the pandemic. Um, so what is, what is the impact has it had on those groups? So um, low income families, for example, have begun to borrow more and fall into arrears on, the, on existing bills and payments. For example, um, step, change, step change in um, June of 2020 reported that uh, 37% of those with existing debt um, were finding it hard to meet their repayments, um, increasing their borrowing in order to, to make ends meet and using credit cards more than before the pandemic. Um, um, low income families um, arrears are largely based on essential household bill payments. So it's not kind of those luxuries, you know, like um, new laptops or new phones just being able to kind of keep the roof over their head. Um, and low income families have experienced a deterioration in their living standards. Um, so this could be, so for example, the running we trust from that BME people were more likely to have had to start using savings for day-to-day -day spending. Um, they found it harder than usual to pay for essentials and meet basic needs. Um, so they found harder than usual to pay bills or rent. And um, many of them had to start borrowing from friends and family in some cases. Um, and some have started um, skipping meals or doing so more, more than usual than, um, than often due to financial difficulties. So it's that, what's that combination between um, 
heating and eating. And the, the child poverty action group also suggested that 60% of low income families were struggling to cover the cost of three or more basic essentials, including food, utilities, rent, travel or child related costs. And problem debt also has a negative impact on relationships, um, personal well-being and physical and mental health. And this is something um, obviously we touched upon in our, in our breakout room. So um, relate, um, highlight that struggling with problem debt can lead to increased relationship distress and relationship breakdown. And then another um, particular survey by the um, Health Foundation that reported that people in the bottom 40% of incomes are almost twice as likely to report poor health than people in the, in the top 20%. So obviously full into debt um, has many, many consequences, um, not just financial in nature. Um, and the Money Advice Trust also highlights that during the pandemic, 20% of those who had said they'd experienced a negative impact on their finances, so their financial worries have ne negatively impacted on their mental health. So there's often that double stigma of being um, suffering from mental health um, issues and being in debt. And um, so what is what is your experience? So um, what are the causes of debt in your community and what resources are there to push back against these causes? So obviously we've gone through a um, broad brush national picture. Um, but we're going to again break into smaller groups and ask the the um, question that has just been posed. Um, so what we look to do is obviously have two lists. So one of cause of debt and one of resources. For example, advice centres, um, campaign groups, or other institutions which may help limit the impact of the forces contributing to toxic debt. So it's that again. It's about. Um, what the community has to push back against the causes of toxic or problem debt. 